And you might feel a little pinch. Would a nice pick driven through the eggshell thin bone above your eye and to your brain cure your maladies, your melancholy, your madness? During the middle decades of the 20th century, transorbital lobotomy, or ice pick lobotomy, a radically invasive form of brain surgery, was used extensively for patients with psychiatric illnesses. It was a rapidly executed procedure, taking perhaps a few tens of minutes in total, requiring no more than a local anesthesia conducted for the purpose of psychosurgery. This was an era before effective pharmacotherapies or psycho psychotherapies for psychiatric illnesses. An era before there was an outline understanding of the psychological function supported by the frontal lobes. We now know much about the frontal lobes. They support executive functions within the brain such as planning, intending, imagining alternatives, initiating actions, directed remembering, and deferring gratification. In short, what makes a human. In the unfortunate patient, the frontal lobes would be cut away from the rest of the brain by a simple and quick side-by-side -side motion, leaving the person with an irreversible and enduring consequences. There were good intentions behind this procedure. Curing the incurable by radically intervening in the brain. However, transorbital lobotomy required many of its victims, rendered many of its victims docile, mutant, compliant. This therapeutic surgery strategy was a terrible but instructive failure of medical ethics of patient treatment and of neurological understanding of brain function and dysfunction. The legacy is what can go wrong. Medical ethics, safeguards, and precautions have evolved so that simultaneously, reckless experiments can never be conducted again. This is a picture of Dr. Friedman doing a procedure at a psychiatric hospital and then him getting an award. My question to you, does this look like a fun time?
research up. Research down. Well, as you can see, I'm back at the VA. Started another trial. That's after we finished the other one, and I'm almost perpetually in, involved in research, and I suggest you do the same. that came up with lobotomies and then another guy who actually came up with a new technique for lobotomies and even though that was a procedure a pretty fucked up one where they fucking jab something in your eye through the back of your fucking head and scramble your fucking brains it was real it might be extreme but in order to get that so it was working they had to do research now, that's extreme, that's fucked up. That's not something I'm on board with. But that, once again, somebody had to be the first one. Now, that in mind, a lot of the research that I've been involved in has been uh, blood pressure stuff. And not really overly beneficial to myself, but for someone else. But that's the purpose of research. That's the purpose of doing what you got to do. You have to do something that's bigger than yourself. You have to get involved. Typically, there are places you would feel a little bit out of your comfort zone. Hey, let me tell you. I think that's my ride. I'm not a little bit out of my comfort zone. I'm completely out of my fucking comfort zone. Every day I wake up and I get this fucking chair, I'm out of my fucking comfort zone. Fucking bullshit. If you're gonna do it, do it right. And if you're curious who to talk to about this, like I said before, call up local colleges, call up local hospitals, go online, find out about spinal cord injury research, but become fucking something more than yourself. You'll be amazed at what we can achieve together. Hopefully.